I hope you're well and very, uh, very fine and in good health and what have you. This fine and pleasant evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what are we going to be doing tonight? Well, as you can see, we have a Timex Sinclair 1000 or is it X81 to you and I, which contains the traditional RF TV antenna or aerial connector which in this day and age is particularly poor, doesn't work very well, and it's a little bit rubbish. So we're going to change it for a composite signal. And how do we do that? Well, we take a uh, transistor, a 2N3904 transistor. There seems to be 10 of them. No, there isn't. One, two, three. Anyway, uh, we take a transistor. We open up the RF connector inside there, the box. We cut a few traces. We bridge a few bridges. Uh, stick in a couple of resistors. Connect up the transistor and bingo. We have a composite signal. Um, how does this work? Well, the good old Sinclair, or Timex Sinclair, does actually create a composite signal already. The ULA does this but it is downgraded and converted to UF, or RF rather. And that's the signal, that it, that's the uh, connection rather, that generates a signal that works on old fashioned TVs where you tw twiddle the dial and the snowy picture will eventually become the picture of your computer screen. Um, <clears throat> it worked okay in the old days where you had a rotary knob on the TV in the mid to late 80s the digital tuners started to appear or electric tuners not digital but electric tuners they caused problems i remember my my brother had a massive 28 inch tv and um that had an electronic tuner so you'd press the search button and it went through the channels and it was potluck whether it would ever find my ti-99 and then later um commodore 64. Uh, it wasn't ideal, but there used to be a um, not a micro search, a mini search, or whatever it was. And you could press that, and it went at half speed. But you had to keep your finger on it. It'd take about ten minutes to tune in. But that's how we got a signal in the old days. But anyway, so I'm going to convert this to composite, so I can plug um, the composite lead in the side there, connect it to my TV, and away we go. It should be a well, I was going to say a perfect picture, but it will be a. Um, pretty damn good picture and considerably better than the one that was on it before. So without further ado, let's pull this um, Sinclair Timex apart. So the first job is to remove these four pads here. The screws are hidden under there. Uh, two screws there as well, one there, one there. Not sure what they connect to, they might have a heat sink or hold the motherboard on. I can't remember now, it's been a long time since I've pulled a spec um as that is 81 Bart. I never said spectrum. Anyway, uh let's get on. Well it seems you only need to take three off, which is that one, that one, and that one, as this one <coughs> has no screw under it. <coughs> Cheeky little monkey. Okay, let's strip it down more. So here we are, here's the Timex 1000 with the cover removed. It is um, a little bit different to the ZX81 in so much as you can see that the inside of the case is um, coated in some kind of, I don't know, chrome effect silver paint, I guess. And presumably this is um, conductive and will provide some sort of RF shield for the uh, interference from the modulator which is there not sure 
Tamek Sinclair, 1983. Oh no, issue three, 1981. ECS. Ah. Based on an Amiga. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, there we are. And here we are. This is the other side. So this is the Timex 1000. Very, very ZX81 like, except for the two kilobytes of RAM. <clears throat> Apart from that, I think it's pretty much identical. Not sure. So what we're going to do now is open the modulator, the Aztec modulator, and uh, pop a transistor in there and hopefully generate a composite signal. And here we have the top removed. So what we're going to do is solder a transistor in there and um, generate the signal. 